The module, together with its uh, power unit and main engine, which is, sits underneath it down there, is what's generally referred to as the mother spacecraft. And on this flight, it'll be the base of operations from which the lunar module goes down to the surface of the moon and back up. It's really quite small. At its widest point across the base, it's only about 13 feet. It's uh, made of honeycomb aluminium and steel on the outside. And the top comes off, as it is here, in order to let the crew go up through into the lunar module. There are two windows on either side through which they take most of the camera shots, and then two rendezvous windows here and here, with the glass slanted this way so that the crew can see through in the direction in which they're generally going, forwards, that way. The uh, hatchway here is opened only twice, once to get in on the launch pad at Cape Kennedy, and once more to get out in the Pacific when they get back. Inside, it's even more cramped than it looks from outside, for three men, all of whom are about five foot eleven each. The lunar module pilot, Buzz Aldrin, lies in that couch there. In the centre couch, which has been taken out to let us get in, Michael Collins, the command module pilot, and Neil Armstrong, the man who will be the first to set foot on the moon, the commander, flies in the left-hand couch here. Now, the commander's instrument panel obviously contains the most important flight instruments on board because he's the man who flies the spacecraft most of the way. And he flies it essentially by putting it in the right position in space using these directional jet controllers here on his hand grips. Once he's got the spaceship in the right position in space, he then uses the controls on his main instrument panel to fire the engine in the direction he set himself to go. First of all, of course, the computer, which gives him all the information he needs to make the decisions he has to. Down here, the whole section that covers what, what he has to do if something goes wrong on launch, the abort panel, as it's called. Next to the abort panel, the fuel stage of the third stage, that's the stage that fires them from Earth orbit out towards the moon. Right above that, the attitude indicator, that's the control that tells him which way he's facing in space. Over here, the command module pilot, but his normal area of work, because he's the navigator, is down here. This is where the navigator, that's the command module pilot, spends most of his time, in the navigation bay. He has, of course, up there on his panel, also instruments that he has to check all the way through the flight, basically instruments that tell him the fuel states of the engines on board. But here's where he spends most of his time. And he spends most of his time looking through two, uh, a sextant and a telescope up here. You navigate in space using those instruments like this. You line up the instruments on a star, and when you've lined that up, you press the button and that information goes into the computer. And the computer then says, yes, I agree, that star is where it ought to be, therefore we're on course. Um, it's useful that the computer can check that because on Apollo 8 they once lined up the instruments on a blob of urine that was floating not too far away in space and the computer said, don't be worried, uh, we're not in the wrong place, that's not a star, that's a blob of urine. This is the only part of the spacecraft that you can actually stand up in because it leads to the docking tunnel through to the lunar module and being able to stand up in a spacecraft really pleases most astronauts. <laughs> 